All right, we're on the road again. This is a redo, redo of the, the video that I accidentally deleted from a couple of weeks ago. So hopefully this one turns out just as good because it was, I edited it and uh, everything and uh, got in, got up to about half an hour. Uh, it was two and a half hour upload to YouTube and um, I deleted the video, for, I thought it was done and I deleted the video from my computer with about half an hour to go. And then obviously YouTube can't finish the upload if the video doesn't exist. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was pretty pretty pissed off about that. But anyway, we'll do the same ride again today. I have, um, it's it, same thing as last time. It was, it's pretty cold. Um, but yeah, I didn't, didn't bring a jacket. Uh, 10 minutes or so, I'll be fine. I'll be getting hot. Sun's out anyway. So I think it was a bit cloudy last time I went. Got a bit of a new angle on the camera as well. I used to have it so it was on top of my handlebars. Now I've got it so that it's actually swing. It, the camera's upside down and swinging down underneath my handlebars. So a bit of a bit of uh, a bit of a lower point of view. So we'll try that. Uh, I finally remembered to adjust my handlebars as well. So that's all good. What else did I do? I ran a, um, I ended up getting a uh, two meter USB-C cable from AliExpress. That came in the other week, or the other day. And it's, it's got a USB-A on one side that you plug into your power bank. And then it's got um, it, one cable. And then just at the end, it terminates to two USB-C connectors. So that'll be handy for uh, charging the phone and charging the camera up. Um, the only thing is with my camera, I've got a USB-C microphone plugged into it. That's what you're listening to now. And uh, it's, so obviously you can, if you've got the microphone, if I'm using it, I can't charge it. But if I stop for a coffee or whatever, I'll be able to bung a bit of charge into the camera just to charge it up. But I'm pretty impressed with this Osmo 3. Uh, the video that I deleted, that, that was just over an hour's worth of footage. And uh, the, ba the camera battery still had 20, it was about the same as a bike, I remember seeing it. So it, it had about 26% left in the battery. Um, and that's at 4K, 30 frames a second with Rocksteady Plus stabilization on it so pretty pretty good to get over an hour out of one battery i was going to buy a second battery and i thought oh, i'll just use it for a bit and see how we go and yeah not necessary and that ride was 60k's i got an hour worth of footage out of a 60k ride and um yeah i'm not i'm not planning on riding much more than that so this bike's got a throttle so i'm in the wrong gear but i can just put the throttle on and no no dramas really really handy and now I'll change down oh I don't know why I crossed the road I did this last time as well I was going to stay on that side of the road but anyway something different yeah big delay there on the gear change I think I was talking about that in the video as well um, the, when I first picked this bike up, uh, the guy, the bo guy at the bike shop built it and the gear changes were silky smooth and instant, really nice, clicky and straight away. And they're starting to um, chatter the chain a bit and, and uh, you know, you click once and it changes two gears or like that, there's a delay. Um, but it's just the cable, the cable stretch. So... He said bring it back when it's done about five, six hundred k's. And, uh, you know, he'll go through everything again, give it a little mini service, whatever it needs. So, yeah, I'll do that. Already at a hundred k's now. And had it for two weeks. So, it's not too bad. And I'll, I'll just keep this thing in pedal assist number one. It's not really rideable in zero. It's a little bit too much resistance, um, but in one, 
it just feels like a normal biking one. And then when you hit a hill, you bump her up. That's the only time I really go any higher than one is uh, hitting, you know, start climbing a hill and you just bump it up and then it's back to normal. So yeah, pretty good. And the, the torque sensor on this is really nice. Very silky smooth. He's loving it, he had a wave. Not many people wave at you these days. I always try and say good morning if I can. The only thing with the camera down there is I can't really see the screen. So hopefully it's all on the right settings, it should be. I'll try, and that last video I did was an hour, it's probably a bit long, um, so I'll try and trim down the talking a bit and only, only turn it on when there's something interesting to say or see, so yeah, I'll leave it at here for now. I'm going to go, um, so I'm on Hepburn Ave at the moment, I'm going to go west towards the ocean, uh, but there is a, there's a big lake called Lake Galalia which turns into Lake Joondalup. Um, and that'll take me all the way north to Burns Beach Road and then there's a coffee shop there. The last time I was there it took me about 10 minutes to order the coffee and then another 15, 20 for them to make it. So I'll suss out how busy it is today and if it's the same as last time I'm going to skip the coffee I think. Um, it's too long, too long to wait. Uh, good coffee, almost worth the wait but not, not for 25 minutes or something. Um, so yeah, then I'm gonna, I'll hit that place, that's right on the coast, and then we'll head south to Hepburn Ave. Uh, uh, sorry, um, just south along the coast to, towards Hillary's. It's just a big bike track that goes the whole way. This guy wants to take up the whole path. Um, yeah, so south from Burns Beach, right along the coast the whole way. We'll come across Ocean Reef Marina, which is where I normally take my jet ski, um, and Hillary's too sometimes, so then we'll hit Hillary's. And then pretty much this road now, Hepburn Ave that we're on, if you take this towards the coast, um, it'll hit Hillary's. Take you straight to Hillary's pretty much. So yeah, so we're on it now, then we're gonna go north, uh, and then back south, hit this road and back home again. And that should be around the 60K mark. So that's the plan, we'll see how we go. All right, and here we are. I'm not sure how you say it. Oh, it's Yellow Gonga, but it's called Lake Galalia or some, something like that. I'll, if I see the name somewhere, I'll stop. I'm 100% sure that's not how you pronounce it. I think it's like a local Aboriginal name, but yeah, I don't, I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, good run, we're about 6K in. No dramas, I'm gonna start going a bit slower. Um, not that I'm worried about running out of battery. It's just 30K an hour is too fast, so I, I just can't be bothered going that fast. It's, uh, you gotta pedal, not hard, but you gotta pedal fast to, to be at that speed. So um, I'm gonna try and, try and keep it under 25 if I can. Above 20, but under 25. And we'll see how we go then. Uh, it's windy, but I don't think it's as windy as it was last time, and I think that's why I used a lot more battery than what I was expecting. I mean, still 60Ks with 26% uh, battery left, that was pretty good. G'day. G'day. But it should be, um, should be better. Uh, but I am over 100 kilos, plus I've got a bit of stuff on the bike as well, so. It's, it's almost close to its, um, oh, I wouldn't have 40 kilos on the bike or 50 kilos, so, yeah. But yeah, I'm not 60 kilos, so I think that's when they, because in America, they're, they're saying they're getting 50 miles, which is like 85 kilometers. That's crazy, you know, and getting back with what I got back with after 60, so. But I'm pretty sure they're little, little, little people. 
but that's okay. I mean, I, like I said, 60 k's is, is good enough for me. That's you know, with that much in reserve, that's pretty good. You can still bump up the PAS if you want to, or you can use throttle a bit and still get back with some left. So it's all good. Uh, yeah, I'm not liking this camera position. Every time I've got to switch it on, I've got to feel for the button because I can't see it now because it's underneath. And I feel like I'm changing the angle of it all the time. So I don't think it's going to stay in that position. But we'll see, we'll see. I've just, so I've got these Tannis liners in these front and rear. I'm uh, pretty impressed actually. Uh, no, I can't feel any, di or maybe I can feel a difference. And to me, it feels like it's harder, not softer. Um, I've only got 40 PSI in these and they feel like they're at 60. Uh, like rock hard. Um, I don't mind it hard. I'd rather have it hard than soft. Go through a lot less battery and less prone to punches, but then you got the tanner, so that shouldn't matter anyway. Uh, tubes, I've got TPU tubes from AliExpress, and I'm still not 100% on them. It's just the only, re they are paper thin. Like when, when I say not even balloon thickness, that's, I'm not joking. They feel like a plastic bag. Um, so I'm not 100% sold on them, uh, but my missus is at home on standby. I'll put the bike rack in the car, so if something happens, she can just come get me. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, I showed it in one of my previous videos, how thin they are. Uh, you try and poke them. If you try and poke them, uh, it doesn't go through. I tried it with a scalpel, that was the only thing I could get it to go through with uh, decent force. Uh, but with pointy things, like pointy screwdrivers and stuff, it wouldn't go through. And, and now with the Tannis, it's the thing that goes through the tyre would have to be at least, I don't know, including the rubber on the tyre, the Tannis is 15mm thick, so it's going to have to be 20mm before it even touches the tube. Uh, so. Yeah, should be fine. But this, this ride, this exact ride, is where I came home with uh, probably about five thorns front and rear in each tire. And one of them was the one that let the air out, big one. And that's when I, after that, that's when I went to these uh, Tannis liners and the TPU tubes. Before that it was just rubber with some armadillos in it. So yeah, we'll see how we go now. Yeah, heap of people out. It's pretty early, but yeah, heap of people. It's gonna get hot this week. It's gonna be, um, I think it's at uh, 30, 30. It's only gonna be 25, I think today, and 28 tomorrow. But then the rest of the weeks, like mid, mid to high 30s. So I don't know if I'm going to get out for a ride again this week, so I thought I'd better go today. I think it's going to be too warm. Be able to go in the morning, but not for a big ride like this, because um, I won't be I won't be back home till like 11 ish, and uh, by 11 on a 36 degree day, by 11 it's going to be over 30, just a little bit too uncomfortable. Um, the heat doesn't bother me; it's the sun. The sun just scorches you. Uh, we we're talking about it. We just come back from Mandra, uh, which is south of Perth, about an hour or so from our place. And uh, you sit in the sun. We we just walked down. Uh, we stayed at a mate's place and uh, walked down. Got Subway. Sat on the bench for 20 minutes to eat it, and then started walking back. We we're under trees for most of it. But when we were having lunch, we were in direct sun. But it wasn't that hot. It was windy. And uh, all four of us come back red, as red out like we'd been in the sun for hours. So, yeah, the sun down here, I don't know if any of you guys have been to Australia, you can let us know. 
how it compares to anywhere else you but like if you're used to sitting outside in your house in america or england wherever you europe whatever and then you come to australia 15 minutes you're a beetroot it's pretty pretty bad so that's the main reason i've, I've got a hat with wings on it so it protects your um protects your neck and your ears but it's not fun riding with that because it just flaps around everywhere uh, so yeah, I'll try and avoid it. I'll try and avoid the sun if I can. Like skin cancer is a massive thing in Australia. And uh, a lot of people, my uncles had it. My, oh, heaps of people, my dad had it. He had to have some like cream that you rub on your head. I think my uncle had the same thing. And, and my dad's got fairly dark skin as well. He's like Mediterranean descent and um, yeah, skin cancer's all over the top of his head. And you get this cream that you run, that you rub on it, like kills all everything that it touches. You put up with a red head for about a month or six weeks or something like that. You gotta put it on day and night and apparently it really burns and stings. Uh, that's the only way you can, apart from cutting them out, but I think he had way too many to cut out. He would have been left like a pin cushion. So they use this cream, so yeah. But my uncle had the same thing. He's got pretty fair skin, he's a, uh, um, what's her name, England, English descent. But yeah, I don't, I don't think it cares here, the sun, it's just, just really, really brutal. And I don't know why the, the ozone layer is so thin, I think oh, apparently that's what it is. Because we've got hardly anyone in Australia, it's all just bush, apart from where the major capital cities are. And we've got the worst sun in the world, apparently, so... Yeah, I mean, I've, I've travelled a bit, I've been to a lot of Asian countries. And you can walk around all day, no worries, not get burnt. Um, you get hot and you go, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm in the sun, but you don't actually burn. You just get a bit warm and that's it. But yeah, it's crazy in Australia. Everything here is out to kill you. Nah, just joking, it's alright. You get used to it. Actually, on that last ride that I lost the footage for, there was a snake. Just saw the ass end of it. I'll show, where was that? That was at uh, Ocean Reef Marina. We'll go past there again. Uh, just in the bushes, just, I heard it move. I looked and I just saw the ass end of it move away. That's the good thing about snakes is they're pretty shy. So yeah, if they hear you coming, they're just gonna, they'll try and go 99% of the time, they try and get away from you. It's if you chase them or you accidentally step on them or uh, do something like that, that's when they'll have a bite. But other than that, they'll run away most of the time. There's one, we got one snake and it's, it's bad in WA called a tiger snake. And they're called a tiger snake because they're vicious, they'll actually chase you. Um, and I've, I've they, that's probably the most snake that I've seen. Um, Whiteman Park, they're everywhere. They love, I don't know, I think it's more Jugites and I don't know, they're, there's, they're different colours out here, but the ones in Whiteman Park are all black, so they're the t tiger snakes. And uh, yeah, they're, I wouldn't say they're vicious, but I mean, they'll run away if they can, but if they can't, they'll chase you. They won't just stay there like the other snakes. Um, so yeah, you want to avoid them. And they're poisonous as well. They'll put, don't know if they'll kill you, but they'll definitely put you in hospital. They'll stuff up your day pretty bad, hey, getting done by one of them. My mate was riding a quad bike and um, through some bush around here somewhere. He's got a property. And uh, yeah, he, riding, riding, riding. And a quad bike's got a fair bit of protection. He's going pretty fast too. And um, stopped and went, oh, my leg hurts. And looked down, lifted up his pants and he had a snake bite. Went to hospital and uh, they tested the venom or did, did whatever they did and they determined it was a tiger snake. But he reckons he never stopped. Um, so it wasn't, yeah, he was actually riding when he got bitten. 
So yeah, pretty lucky, or pretty unlucky for him, pretty lucky for the snow. But yeah, not good. So yeah, if you go out in the bush, you've got snakes to deal with. In the city, you've got spiders. You don't really get snakes around where we are. In here, you will. This is in the city, but because it's, it's all bushland. Especially around the water, just to my right. If you go in there, just over there, I guarantee you, within five minutes, you'll see a snake, especially now that the weather's getting warmer. I guarantee you'll see, you'll see or hear a snake. Uh, they love the water, because that's where all the food is. So yeah, stay well. I've seen tiger snakes swimming on the water and everything, it's crazy. Um, so yeah. And then if you go on the beach, you've got the sharks to deal with. Not that they're, not that they're out all the time, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I stay away from the beach. Apart from going fishing every, maybe once every 10 years, off the, off the beach, and you just go in up to your knees to cast and then back out. And uh, jet skiing. Uh, no, nah, that's about it for me. Mate that I normally go jet skiing with, his mate, his mate lives up in Lancelin or Joondalup or something. Can't, uh, Lancelin or Geraldton, can't remember, might have been Lancelin, which is about an hour's north of where we are now. And uh, he went out apparently fairly, fair, fair whack with his jet ski. And, uh, well, so actually no, the start of the story was me and my mate bought our jet skis at the same time. Um, he posted on Instagram and then his mate rang him up, this guy that lives up north. And he said, oh yeah, yeah so you got a jet ski, yeah. And my mate goes, oh yeah, you got one too, haven't you? And he goes, oh, I sold it, just sold it. He goes, oh, bugger, you know, we could have all gone, gone out. And he go, and then he said this story. So what happened was he went out, fair whack, I think he's into his fishing, so he went out a fair way and um, parked up. Anyway, he sees the water go from blue to like a light blue. And then all of a sudden, this big head pops up. You know, he reckons his eye was the size of a basketball. Uh, it could be a bit of exaggeration, but yeah, he reckons his big shark just came up to have a look what was going on. He didn't know, must not have known what the jet ski was. And he's just popped his head up. And uh, all he saw was head and eye. He reckons he started his, he threw his, threw his rod in the water and um, started the jet ski and just hightailed it back to land and uh, sold the jet ski the next day. He had enough of it. So, yeah, he reckons this thing would have swallowed the jet ski. Like, jet ski and him together, no worries. So, uh, yeah. But, yeah, like I said, I don't, I go, in the, I go to the beach on the, on the jet ski, but not that often. And if I am, I'll make sure I'm moving. I don't just bob around like bait. We got a really nice um, island called Garden Island, just off the coast. Uh, it's about, I'd say probably, oh, it's closer than Rottnest. Rottnest is a fair hike, um, but yeah, it's 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 probably half an hour. It might be halfway. I don't know. I'm not sure. But it, yeah, it's if you look it up, Garden Island. Um, really nice. I've been there a few times on the jet ski. And it, it's, a, um, it's a military base, or so the Navy's based out there. But they don't have the whole island. They've, they've got like the bottom half and the, and the bit that faces Perth. They don't have the east, uh, west facing part or the north bit. So uh, yeah, really nice. Water's about, just off the coast there, the water's about six, seven metres deep and it's crystal clear. You can see right down the bottom. And it's like a magnifying glass when you look down, you, you think it's only about two metres deep. But I've got a depth sounder on the, um, on the jet ski and it's telling me it's seven, eight metres deep. And you don't believe it, but yeah, it's just crystal, crystal clear water. It's really nice. If you go there on a nice day, everyone with a boat in Perth just around there moored up, hundreds of boats. Uh, yeah, so pretty nice. I uh, definitely want to get the jet ski out this summer, more than last summer. I think I only used it about four or five times last summer. So I definitely want to get it out. All right, 
garage is pulling onto uh, Burns Beach Road. So that was a nice, nice ride through there. Pretty good. You're almost in the shade for all of it. Um, the trees go right over that um, that path. But uh, yeah, it's not not really anything. Uh, fantastic to look at along this road it's just a normal road so once I get around this corner I'll be facing west heading west towards the water should be a nice day it's definitely not as windy as what it was um, last time I came We're about 20k in, 20k's from home. It's pretty much 26k's to the coffee shop. So I've got another six, six-ish k's to go. So we're almost there. And we'll figure out if we're having a coffee or not. I'll get back to you just as I'm pulling into the coffee shop. All right, here we are. So 20, 24.3 k's and I've got 83% battery left. So not, not bad, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what it was last time I came here. Uh, I've come exactly the same way and used exactly the same amount of power at this point. So I remember commenting that I'd only used 15% battery to travel the 25 kilometers to get here. So pretty good that the Tannis hasn't uh, changed anything there. That's really good. Uh, heaps not as busy today. So I'm definitely going to stop in and get a coffee. Um, might go... Might go and have a look at this lookout first. Oh, yeah, it's, de it's definitely not as windy as what it was the other time. way better oh, it's low tide as well I don't remember seeing all these rocks last time I was here that looks nice no you can't see I'll take some footage with my phone I don't want to disconnect the camera it's a pain to put back on but yeah nice little spot here Okay, so that's the that's the coffee shop I'm about to go to, just there. And yeah, low tide for sure. You can see all the all the rocks exposed. But yeah, beautiful day. It's a nice little. I think I've been out there with the jet skis a couple of times. And it's pretty cool. It's full of birds, and you see the odd seal out there. But nah, looking good. <clears throat> yeah, so you get to see things like that around here. Yeah, the only thing with having the camera down low, you can't really see what I can see up here. Probably only can see the fence and the bushes, whereas I can see all down to the coast, which is a bit of a shame. I think I'm going to put it back up the top. <clears throat> just a lot easier to keep an eye on it make sure it's in the right mode and recording and pressing buttons so pretty much everything is better the only good thing about having it down there is that it's out of the way uh, it's not really in the way that much to have it on the top anyway so I'll play with that I might actually stop up at Hillary's and uh, change or maybe even Ocean Reef <coughs> Ocean Reef just in front of us there. That's the new marina. And last time I came, 
I was trying to get out on those um, those rocks there, but couldn't do it. They um, they haven't opened it up yet. It's just pretty fresh. All right, this is Ocean Reef Marina. Uh, there's not much here. There's no shops or anything. There will be soon. That's what they're doing all this work for. But the boat, I think they put the boat ramp in first. But all the boat ramp's been here for years. And now they've finally decided that they're just on the right here. There's going to be shops and it's going to be much like Hillary's, I think, maybe even a little bit bigger. You can actually store your boats here, go and have dinner, uh, a bit of a night spot. So it should be good. And then we've got, it's pretty good here. Like it gets busy, but you're never waiting too long to get your boat in the water. So that on the left hand side there is, oh no, this is launch on this side. Yeah. And that side's retrieve. So as long as everyone abides by those rules, it, it's pretty good. So, yeah, so you, you pretty much come down, you wait in one of these bays here. One to, it looks like that's blocked for some reason. You wait there till the other dude's finished. He pulls out, you pull in, and uh, it's pretty good. The only shit thing is you've got to go up these massive stairs once you've drunk, dumped your boat or jet ski and then walk back up there to the car to go and drop everything off. Um, that's, I kind of come here a fair, probably more often than not, but otherwise Hillary's a little bit further down is uh, pretty good as well. The only thing, Hillary's is a bit more expensive. This, I think this is 10 or 12 bucks uh, day parking and Hillary's is 15 or something like that. Oh, you've got some people with uh, finding metal. Pretty cool, never seen that before. Yeah, so yeah, that's uh that's Ocean Reef and that's this is the rocky kind of thing I was trying to get on out here, but they haven't opened it yet. Because that'd be cool, you could go right to the end, well over there. It'd be pretty cool. So th th this was kind of the funniest, or well not funniest, probably the worst day I've had on my jet ski. Um, me and my old man, I decked my jet ski out for fishing. Uh, put an esky rod holders, uh, rod holders on the esky, um, all that kind of stuff, and uh, he was keen to come. So uh, my my jet ski is a, a Yamaha EX Deluxe, I think it is. So it's kind of the smallest Yamaha, uh, comparable to a probably Sea Doo um, uh, Trix, I think. It's, oh, what's it called? A Spark. It's probably a little bit bigger than a Spark, and um, so yeah, not the, not the biggest jet ski in the world. Plus I'm, I'm just on 100 kilos. My old man's probably not far off it, so the thing's got 200 kilos of people on it, plus gear. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't overloaded, it reckons it can take up to about 280 kilos. It reckons it's three people, 280 kilos, but I'd, I wouldn't trust that. Um, so yeah, we jumped on it, no worries. Took off from here. Um, got got out a fair way out, like you still see the land and everything, we're that far away. And um, went and uh, started fishing for about five minutes, didn't catch anything. So then um, Dad spun around, so we were back to back, I was facing the right way and he was facing backwards. So just so we don't get our fishing rods tangled up. And um, <clears throat> I thought, oh come on then, let's go because we're not catching anything here, so we'll head, head a bit further inland. So we, or not inland, but towards the shore. And um, at that point, we're probably, I don't know, four, 500 meters offshore. And um, I, I was heading towards shore, I turned around, just do a little 180, just so that the waves weren't banging us in from behind, we were kind of head onto them. And um, that's when it all started. He didn't know I was turning and uh, he didn't anticipate the turn. And we kind of, I don't know, we were turning left and we just rolled over very, very slowly. Um, so he went in the drink, I went in the drink, but I managed to hold onto the rail of the jet ski. And um, he kind of let go. I think it was about 15, 16 metres deep at that point. So we were fair whack, we were fair whack offshore. And um, I don't know how, but I got back on and I didn't have that lanyard on. So this jet ski was on its way to Rottnest pretty much if I, if I, didn't hold on to it. It was, it was on its way. Um, so, yeah, I pulled myself back up, and um, 
Dad couldn't get back up because the, he had the esky was on the back, so he had nowhere to really get back up on. So um, he had to hang on on the side rail at the back. And I've um, I said, you know, we'll go to shore there because we're about 400 metres offshore, something like that. And um, you can, we, you know, we can beach it, and then you can jump back on, and off we go. Anyway, we start getting towards the shore, and I realise it's just all rock. There's no way I was getting anywhere near the shore. It was just rock. You know, I was pretty close to it at that point. So he jumped off, he swam over to the rocks, really sharp, you know. He lost his shoes, lost his hat, lost his glasses. I lost a shoe, all my tackle went in. Uh, I think we lost a fishing rod. Yeah, and he broke, I, I got some stainless steel um, turnbuckles that hold my esky on. One of them came off and um, when he was trying to grab himself back up onto the thing, lost that. So it was a bit of an adventure, but anyway, it was it was winter too, and he had a jacket on, and um, freezing cold, and he's had to leg it over the rocks, and I, we couldn't talk to each other because he didn't have his phone. He left his phone in the car, and um, had to leg it. He had to walk up like this protected bit. Um, you're not really meant to walk on, but if you got no other option, you got no other option. Through that scrubby stuff we were just riding over uh, next to next to that path, and he hit, and then he walked up to that path and started coming back towards the um, the car park just here. Um, so I just came back. I put the jet ski on the trailer by myself and just I thought I'd better wait for him in the car park because um, if he if I start driving around looking for him, we're going to miss each other. So I just waited in the car park and about half an hour later he came and he comes walking down. You could see him. he's got no shirt on, just, just shirt, just a pair of shorts, no shoes, fishing rod, broken fishing rod in one hand, um, his wet jacket in the other hand. And it was about seven degrees. I took a photo of it. It was so funny. But um, yeah, and I'll, I'll put a photo up of where, where we kind of, you see the rocks and stuff. Like WA's got some of the sandiest, best beaches in the world. And the bit that we try, we decided to roll the jet ski on is <laughs> all rock. So picked a good spot. Yeah, that wasn't much fun. It was both pretty cold, both pretty freezing. So we went, I had a spa at that, that point in time um, at home. So Got back home, cleaned the jet ski up real quick, and ju just jumped in a 40 degree spa. It was beautiful, warmed back up. But um, yeah, that was the last time I've been fishing on the thing. Can't be bothered. All right. So yeah, it was a funny story, but we still talk. That was like two years ago. We still talk about it. It's pretty good. I thought he was gone, all right, because we, we were, he was hanging on. And he couldn't get up, and uh, I'm I'm going, and I could only go slow because um, the, water, the waves were just crashing over the jet ski and then just swamping him. And he could barely breathe. He barely had, had his head above the water. And and because he was hanging on the right-hand side, the jet ski just wanted to go in circles all the time because of, because of the extra drag from him. So, yeah, it was a bit of an adventure. I'm sure people saw what was going on. This is where I saw that snake just here before, last time, last week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure people could see from the from the path there what was going on. I'm wondering what, what was going on. It's pretty funny. This car park on a nice day on the weekend is just full. People people are parked on the on the side of the road and everything. But empty today. A bit windy. I just want to suss out. I didn't do it last week, but I'm, I think there's a new path. I don't know if they finished it though. We'll go and have a look. It just says it's a construction zone, but the path's open. So, we'll go and have a look. I went, in, went down here a long, long time ago and it wasn't done, but it, it was almost done. So it should be done now. And then this path, if it goes through, should take us all the way to Hillary's. But if not, I'm gonna to have to turn around and come back. There's no sign saying that it's closed, so hopefully she's open. There's no one around to ask anyway. But yeah, I think this, this area here is gonna be car park and things like that, a few shops. And then the main, the main bit's going to be on the other side of the ramps there. Should be good once it's all done. Because Hillary's is pretty popular. 
it gets packed out, it gets absolutely slammed in summer. There's so many people there. They've got, um, we'll go past it, they've got like a little inlet and you, 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 you put the kids in there, there's no waves or anything like that. Yeah, I reckon it's open. There's no waves or anything. The only thing is the water's really cold, the bit in there, because it just doesn't circulate. Uh, I don't think the kids mind, but there's yeah, people going past in kayaks and um, they got like a floating in the middle, there's like a floating water park with water slides and stuff like that. They used to have a roller coaster. I think that's gone now, and water slides and things, but I think all that's gone. But whoever owned it just packed up. Yeah, this is definitely brand new, this is all good. Oh yeah, no, it's open, cool. <clears throat> All right, I'll, I'll flick, it's quite windy here. You should be able to hear me because it was way windier last, um, last time. And uh, yeah, I was pretty impressed with this microphone, so. You probably can't even hear the wind, but I'm I'm starting to shout because I can't even hear myself. So um, I'll flick the camera off here, and we'll turn it back on uh, just before we get into Hillary's. All right, I forgot about this one. This is um, Mullaloo Beach. Uh, this is before Hillary's. It's only very small. I think there's one restaurant. One restaurant, no shops. We used to come here heaps when we were kids on uh, Boxing Day, a uh, day after Christmas and New Year's and all that with the like, extended family, just spend the whole day here. But I don't do that anymore. I can't even remember where we used to, it's changed a lot. Yeah, no, it's changed so much. I couldn't even tell you where we um, where we used to uh, camp out for the day, but I'm pretty sure it was up that arse end over there at the end there where those big trees are. Heaps of a... Yeah, one, two, three, elect three electric bikes just there. I, I made a comment when I come through here last week. It was like three electric, or well, it was probably more last week, it was five or six, and two normal bikes. It's pretty funny. I think it's electric. Yep. Oh, I'll pass, I'll pass them just before she's lost him. That's it, that's Mullaloo. But yeah, that playground and all that never used to be here. It was just trees and grass back in the day. And if anyone knows, um, his name's Roscoe McGlashan. Is I think he holds the far, like the land speed record at the moment. He lives just up up there, one street back from the beach, just behind this beach here. And um, he actually stores the car. Aussie Invader, I think it's called. He actually stores it at his house there. Does all the work there. A yeah, bit of a local legend. Um, I think it's gotten. He used to fund it all himself with a few sponsors and things like that. But um, I don't know how fast they used to go. They used to, oh, I'll make it up, but let's just say for, for instance, it used to be seven, eight, 900 Ks an hour. Uh, he could do it with the sponsorship, that just local sponsorship and in his garage. But I think now it's gotten some other companies or some other guys like from the UK, I think, either hold it or are challenging him for the record. I can't remember. He was on a podcast not long ago that I was listening to. Um, so he's got, he's got people from uh, Dubai kind of funding him and throwing way more money at him. So, cause it just, it's, you know, to go that little bit extra faster. I, I don't, it's in the thousands of kilometers an hour that he's going now. Cheers. Um, I, don't, I don't know exactly. You'd have to look it up, but I'm pretty sure it's like 12, well, I, I don't know, Mark, what's Mark 1 is 1200. I'm pretty sure he's going faster than that. 
um, and he's got to go to some sand lakes in Dubai and you know he can't do it here anymore there's just no, nowhere big enough for him over here um, yeah it was a pretty interesting podcast it was two-parter I think it was I can't even remember the guy that hosts it. I think his name's Lee Diffie or something. He, he's a commentator on the V8 supercars and uh, he just interviews people like that in the, in the Aussie motorsport scene. But yeah, he's just around the corner there. We've been past his house back when we were kids, used to come down here. And, um, you know, garage doors up and there's a record holding land speed record car in his garage. It's pretty funny. He, he brought the car to. Um, he didn't drive it obviously, but he brought it to like a Christmas party or something like that. And um, he, he started it up after they told him not to. Um, it, I think it's just got a big jet engine on it, I'm not sure exactly. And um, yeah, he started this thing up. It was, it was south of the river. Uh, not sure exactly where it was, but apparently you could hear him up in the city here. Um, it treated like the sound travelled. It was late at night, and uh, yeah, apparently the sound travelled so far you could hear him in the Perth city, and he was ages away down south. It's pretty funny, but yeah, he's a bit of a larrikin. But yeah, I hope he gets it. That'll be good. I can't remember if he still holds the record or he's going to try and get it back. So the battery's dropping a bit faster than what I thought it would be, but I'm pretty sure it did this last time. And then around the 30% mark, mark, it tapers out and lasts longer. I was getting worried last time because I was like, whoa, we're not going to make it. But yeah, I, I'm pretty sure these liners are making it use a little bit more power, but not a lot. You can hear a helicopter. But we should be right. We've got... 60% battery and done 34 kilometers. But I've noticed the speedometer on this um, on this bike is a bit out. Cuz like the last time I did this ride it said 54 kilometers. But on Strava it said 60 or 59 I think it was so it's about 5 k's out over that distance so I've probably done more than 34 kilometers and yeah see now it's down to 58 percent it just drops really quick but then if you don't pedal for a while it goes back up again so it's all over the place so no nah, not too worried I'm well over halfway through the ride and not even used uh, now I'm trying to keep the speed down, but it's really hard. My comfortable pedalling rate in top gear is around the 27, 28 k an hour mark. Um, and that's on pedal assistant one. So you don't really want to, I don't see why you'd need it. Apart from going up hills, you don't need it like cruise on pedal assistant three or four. All right, so this is Hillary's now. I noticed this building last time. They just, oh, they've done heaps since last week. Wow, it's all decked out on the inside and everything. Hillary's Beach Club. Yeah, they've done, done a, it looked a lot different. Didn't have any of that facade on at the front and the interior was gutted. Now they've got all the interior in and the facade's on. That's only in a week or so. What's going on here? Morning. <laughs> He's learning to ride. That was pretty soft that sand, they need to clean that up. <laughs> you see that guy, he looked left. There's two blokes walking. Um, I think he heard something in the bushes there. He kind of start, got startled and stepped right. But that's, uh, it's not normally snakes, it's, snakes don't really move too much unless you're right on top of them. It's more the little lizards and stuff like that. 
But yeah, if you're not ready for it, it makes you jump. So Hillary's, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go on that uh, rocky stuff because you can you can get out there on Hillary's. That's where a lot of people go fishing at night time. So we'll, I did it last time, so we'll do it do it again out this time. I think this is a dog beach here. Yeah, animal exercise area. Dogs and horses. Yeah, right. I've never seen a horse there. Uh, when we first got our little puppy, the first one, um, we brought him here because they said, because you're not really meant to walk them if they haven't had their vaccinations, but you, you've got to expose them to a lot of things, different things. Uh, within that first 16 weeks, we, we got him at eight weeks old. So in the first 16 weeks, they say it's really good to expose them to as many different things as you can, because then they won't be scared of them. Um, after that, it's a little bit harder. So, but, but saying that, you can't, you're not allowed to walk them around because they can get the, I can't, parvovirus or something like that, because they're not fully vaccinated and can kill them. So you kind of got to be a little bit careful. Uh, but they said bring them to the beach because uh, apparently the parvo virus can't survive on the sand there on the wet sand So you're pretty safe at the beach so we brought him down here and um, Hundreds of dogs we brought him during the week You know It shouldn't be that busy, but it was flat out unbelievable and um, I think it just scarred him and he hates the beach now I'm pretty sure it's from that experience. We we don't really go to the beach very often, but only if I'm fishing or something. But um, yeah, he doesn't like it. He was getting trampled by the big dogs trying to play with him, and it, you know he was only ten weeks old. If that, so if it wasn't so busy, it probably would have been all right. I don't know what the temperature is, but it's pretty warm and there's people walking around in jumpers. It's not that, I'm actually sweating. It was cold when I first took off, but uh, it's nice now. It's really good. That's someone coming up behind me. They got a nice little park or car park first and then there's a nice park coming up. Oh no, he didn't. I slowed down, but he didn't want to overtake me, and he's just turned off. All the mums with the kids there. It's pretty good. Nice spot, right under the trees. And then we might cut through the car park this way this time. I went left there last time, but we'll go this way. The only thing you're not allowed I don't want bikes in um, the main bit here, I'll show you. There's a bridge, uh, just because there's a lot of people walking around. There's another, this is the other boat ramp I come to sometimes. I'll go and have a look, see how much it is. It's probably changed and it's more expensive now. That's a boat ramp there. Um, probably have to find a pay station, see how much it costs. 
Where are they? Oh, there's one. Yeah, no, that's the only thing about Perth, just nothing's free. Can't park anywhere for free. That's one of the reasons I don't go to the city. Because if you, if you go to the city and you need to park in a car park, it costs you like $25, $30. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, um, yeah, $9.80 a day. That's, that's cheaper than Ocean Reef. I thought it was more expensive here. They might have actually bumped, bumped it down. That's pretty good. So over here, If it's, um, if it's quiet, we'll ride through. You're not really meant to ride a bike through here, that's all. But being as quiet as it is, we might get away with it. And I'll just go nice and slow. Yeah, this is that little beach I was talking about just here. And yeah, in the weekends, it's some school holidays really, it's just chockers. And that, see the bridge there where it says Hillary's boardwalk. Uh, that lifts up. I've never seen it lift up, but to get those boats out, that's the only way. That, that bridge lifts up there. Um, it's like a drawbridge or something, but yeah, that's the only way you can get out. But the water in here is so cold. Um, I don't know how people go in it. But yeah, it's good. And they've taken that water park away. You can see there, there's a water slide. Uh, that's not the one I was talking about. It's a, it's a big floating, big raft thing. It almost comes to where that guy is there with the, with the board. That guy there where the board is. Um, there's someone going on that slide now to that jetty that sticks out, it's a big, big thing. But um, yeah, they probably take it away during winter and then bring it back during summer. Um, so it's probably on its way back. But yeah, these, these, all this grass area here is just chockers with people. Lucky if you get a spot. And the roller coaster and stuff used to be just in front of us, behind that fence there. I think it was a roller coaster or water slides or both, I can't remember. But yeah, pretty, pretty nice spot. And this is what they're gonna turn Ocean Reef into, something like this. I don't know if it's gonna have this inlet where the kids can go swimming, but it's definitely gonna have uh, shops and boats and stuff. All the restaurants are just over there to your right. Um, yeah, there's heap, heaps of restaurants and little specialty, like little, um, there's clothes shops and a surf shop and stuff like that in there. It's pretty cool. I'll just take it easy, it's a bit busy. This pub here just here is in front of us is pretty good. There's two pubs there actually. I think they're owned by the same people because when you go inside you can get from one to the other. <laughs> that bike was there last week. Someone's nicked everything off it. Oh, Kingswood, my man used to have one of them, but a sedan, not the station wagon. They're worth big bucks now. Big bucks. All the old Holdens and Fords have just skyrocketed. So if you've got one, hold on to it because they're only going up. And then I was riding in this car park last time as well and almost got run over three times from about here to the end. And uh, yeah, I had to get out, it was just too dangerous. This lady come around this corner here, I took it wide and I was just staring at her in the face. She was facing me pretty much. Whoa, someone's coming. Tesla there, Tesla, another one. Another Tesla there. They're crazy. Just everywhere. And they're not even that cheap in Australia. They're, they're like almost 90 grand here. Alright, 
we'll go out here. Another Tesla. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow, what is going on here? Thanks, mate. Cheers. Nice fella. Yeah, it's quite calm, the waters today, for how windy it is. Would have been a nice day on the jet ski. But I don't, I'm not, um, yeah, I, I don't think I'd go in the ocean on my own on the jet ski. I'd like to have someone else there just in case. A bit dangerous. No backup, I don't like that. Yeah, this is soft. I'm probably going to come off. Nah, made it. This place here on the right, this is the back of it, a uh, place called Underwater World. It's like a big aquarium. Uh, they've got sharks and everything in there. They've got like a massive tank and they've got a tunnel with a conveyor belt or like a moving floor kind of thing. And um, so it's like you're under the water. It's quite good. I'll put a picture of it up if I can find one online. I'm sure there is. There's, like, every, every school kid in WA comes here. For an excursion. I used to have dolphins in this little bit here just in front here but I don't think they've got them anymore. They got in trouble for keeping dolphins. And then you got some nice boats here. This big one here at the end that its name is Humongous. Bloody nice. I don't know who owns that but yeah look at that. So you can jump these rocks if you can get up anywhere and go fishing, it's pretty good. At night time, I don't, I don't think many people fish during the day here. It's more of a night time thing. And there's also a helicopter launch pad from here as well. I saw it last time I was here, I didn't, didn't realise. I don't know, I think it's for like joy flights or scenic flights or something like that. Just here. Land a helicopter for some reason. Oh yeah, helicopter joy flights. Winery tours, yeah, cool. We'll go to we'll go to the end. So I flew my drone here a while or probably this time last year, and got some really nice photos. Got them printed out, and um, you know the top-down view of the, all the boats all parked up there. It's pretty nice. You can only go so far. Actually, I'll go here because that's really soft over there. I'll stay here. So yeah, if, you, if that bike ramp, boat ramp is just in front of us and then you come out here and then you're out in the ocean this way. And that's looking south. That's towards Fremantle. I don't, you probably can't see. So that building there uh, is, I think that's Scarborough Beach. That's the Rendezvous Hotel. And then you can probably see I can't get any more zoom, but that's Fremantle down there. That's all the things that lift the um, lift the uh, containers off the ships. And naked eye, I can't see Rottnest again. This we had the same drama last time. Well, I think it's just too far from here. It's more south. Uh, I don't know. I'll have a look. At, I'll just go nice and slow. You may see it on the horizon with the zoom, but with my eyes, I can't. I can't see it. It's a bit hazy towards the. Towards there, but yeah, you got a bit of it's a lot, definitely low tide. You can see all these um white caps, as you can see, it's just popping up there. A bit of rock, and then there's also 
uh, again can't see it with the eye it's a place called Little Little Island I can't remember where it is I think it's out that way it may even be where those white cats are out there right on the horizon um, but there is rocks so you should be able to see it but I cannot see it but yeah really nice it's about the size of a football field yeah no I can't, I can't see it yeah about the size of a football field with really white sand the seals and birds and stuff all over it and um, you're not allowed to not allowed to beach your ski but I think you can swim up to it if you just park off park off from it and that's Hillary's Marina looking good beautiful day and so that's where we've come from uh, no you can't see much but it's around the corner that's that's Mullaloo I think that's the restaurant at Mullaloo and then we've come from up there so pretty nice it's a bit more protected from the wind on this side I can barely feel it but yeah so you can catch a boat here and go to Rottnest from here or you can catch it from the city takes a lot longer though from the city because you've got to go through the Swan River at eight knots and that's probably a good for it'll it'll put almost an hour onto the top of the trip but from here it's a bit longer as well because it's it's further south otherwise Fremantle was just direct straight across you get there in about 40 minutes so uh, there, that's the ferry there it's the beak of the devil that's the um, that's the Rottnest ferry I don't know how often they leave but yeah so he's only got to do eight knots from there to kind of here and then he can fang it all the way to Rotto but it's diagonal so that's that's the ferry there um, I don't know how long it takes from here I know from Fremantle though it's about 40 minutes it'd probably be close to an hour here and then if you catch it from the city it'd probably be an hour and a half hour 40 something just because the extra time you've got at a slower speed Rottnest fast ferries and it's expensive too um, the, I haven't been to Rottnest on a holiday since I was probably 15 years old if that 10 years old I've been a few times for work but yeah I mean if you're a tourist it's nice to see you got quokkas running around it's really relaxed really nice um, but it's it's just ultra expensive I think it's about 70 odd dollars to get there 80 bucks if you go on like a school holiday that's a public holiday you'd looking probably over a hundred hundred dollars just to get there and back um, and then things I mean there's not a lot there there's a pub there's a chicken tree and a subway a couple little bakeries and stuff like that but other and a general store but there's there's not a lot there and they haven't I don't know if they're allowed to but they haven't really changed anything there like I could go there now and, and it hasn't changed for the last probably 25 years it's all exactly the same they don't add anything I think they've added some accommodation some extra accommodation and that's about it um, but yeah they don't really do a lot to it I think they want to try and keep it a bit secluded not secluded but they don't want to make it cheap so everybody goes there and just ruins it um, so or even just to get your boat, they've only just changed the rules with jets. jet skis weren't allowed to go out that far because it's about 20 k's offshore um, but now you can as of like two months ago or a month ago they've changed the jet ski rules um, so you're allowed to go out there but you've got to pay I can't remember exactly what it is but it's it's 30 or 40 dollars for the paperwork to get out there and then you've got to pay a mooring fee as well even if you run it up on the beach and not use a mooring so you're looking you're looking at close to a hundred bucks just to get your jet ski there for the day so I'm not doing that and Perth's a bit funny with the with the with the wind because um, every afternoon they call it the Fremantle doctor because even on a hot day uh, where I am is a bit too far inland but we still get a bit of a sea breeze um, in the Arvo at about 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock it kicks in and it cools things off but if you're on the coast here it could be 35 but it'd be 26 out here um, yeah when that wind comes in the cold sea breeze comes in it really cools it off um, 
So yeah, every Arvo, without fail, you're gonna get this sea breeze come. And if you go out there with your jet ski in the morning, it'd be really, really calm. And then um, when you're trying to get back, you'd be lucky that you don't have waves. Um, apparently it's the most dangerous ferry, because of, of these ferries that go there. It's the most dangerous ferry crossing in the world, I've heard from someone that works at Rottnest. Um, because a lot of ferries don't go in open waters, they, they travel across inlets and stuff. So, yeah, uh, whereas this one's out, out in proper ocean, you know, like really rough ocean. The last time I went there was with work, and I get seasick really quick. I'm, I'm not good on boats. On the jet ski, I'm fine. If I'm moving forward, I'm pretty good, like out in the open. But sitting inside the, sitting inside that boat, um, all you could see, like you'd, at one point, or you just look out the windows and all you can see is ocean, even if you're looking up. And then the next time you look, um, you, could, you could see no water. Or you could look down and, you'd, and the horizon's like way, you're looking way down. The waves were unbelievable. The boat actually got spun around um, when we are coming back. Uh, we, I, I got on the first ferry out there and halfway there they put an announcement up saying make sure you're on the three o'clock ferry because that's the first one that goes back um, because there won't be another one because it's too rough. So yeah, they only did one ferry out in the morning. Normally they do four or five, I think. Every hour there's one up until about 11 o'clock. And, but no, not this day, it was really busy. Uh, really, really windy, really stormy. It wasn't nice at all. And it took, like I said, normally it's 40 minutes from Frio. I think this took us almost two hours because we're going so slow because of the waves. And we had to stop at one point, the guy spun the boat around or the wave spun it around. And we just had to sit head on with these waves that were coming just because they were too big to cop from the back. Um, yeah, it wasn't good. Oh, I'm gonna go back. All right, I'm gonna start heading home now. Um, so this is that. I'll keep recording until we get on the main road. I'm going to go on the other side though. Um, I went back on the north side last time. Just to mix it up, I'm going to go on the south side. There's a path there. It's a bit, a bit pressed for space there. That little kid didn't know where he was going. Fair enough. I'll just go up here. There we go. And then I want to uh, cross down here. Yeah, so this is Hepburn Ave. You can see it there on that sign. Um, and this is the road that takes us pretty much straight back to my place. So pretty convenient. The only thing is, there's, it's not really a bike path and it's not really a footpath. It's a, it breaks and you have to go on the road every now and again. It's not too bad, but I think this side is a bit more unbroken path than the, than the other side. So I'll stay on this side. I just, I don't like riding on the road. The, Perth drivers is just unbelievable. It's like you're invisible. So I've added a, um, I'll put a little clip up, but I've added, uh, oh, you'll see the mount that I'm using for my camera underslung mount but I am going to change that back to the top I think I prefer it up the top I'll just see what this footage turns out like from today um, and then I've made out of some fishing line and some fishing tackle like a little lanyard just because I don't trust the it's only an AliExpress bike mount for the camera and if that snaps at the handlebar the whole camera is going to fall down and if you're lucky you'll notice it but if not you've lost the camera 
So I've made like a little tether or lanyard up. So if it does fall, it'll just fall and dangle and hang off the handlebars. And then um, I've got, I bought some lights for my gravel bike. Uh, the, I can't even remember, Mini Og or something, I can't remember. They're really good lights, very bright, and you can see them from the side. I'll, I'll try and get a picture of them, if I remember, before I um, start editing this video. I've got them on at the moment. The battery life is really All right, I'll sign off here. I'll have to switch over to the phone. The, uh, the, I, think the, I think it's flat. Um, so I tried to take less footage than last time. Yeah. Um, I got back last time with 20% battery on the camera, so I don't know what's happened there. It was fully charged. Um, so I might have taken way more footage than what I think I have. No, the battery is definitely charged, but anyway, don't matter. I'll finish off on this camera. I'm almost back home now. So, um, definitely used more power. I'm down to 16% uh, battery. Done 52 kilometres, but it's, that's going to be about 60 k's on Strava. I'll put a screenshot up as well. And um, you see the difference. It, it, it's a fair way, uh, and I don't know why it's that different. This matter as long as you're aware of it, it's all good. But yeah, 16, 60 k's, that's enough for me. I'm buggered. So it's three hours again riding. Um, I've only gotten off at the coffee shop, that was it, and, and at Hillary's there. Um, so yeah, that's enough. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, well, I'm just trying to figure out. It's probably the, the liners, the tennis liners, because everyone says you use a bit of the power with that. Um, I've only got 40 psi in the tyres. I normally run at 55. So what I might do is um, on the next ride, I'll pump them up to 55 and then try it again. See what happens. But I mean, I'm, I'm happy with that. I, I wouldn't go like say 60 k's. That's that's the most I'm ever going to do. I normally do about 30, 40. Um, so that's that's plenty. But yeah, I'll sign off. There's nothing to look at here anyway. Got my ugly mug, so. We'll see you guys later. Have a good one. All right, just got back home. So these are those lights I was talking about. So you got kind of different modes, and then that's on the leak that's really bright. Yeah, it's like a strobe. It's it's really bright. The camera doesn't do it justice, but yeah, really good. I normally keep it on that one. That's the most battery conservative one, and then the front one is that one same modes just different color turn that off um that was the final outcome 15 percent battery 53.1 and 150 k's on the bike exactly and that's when the old bike started playing up with that noise at 150 so we'll see how we go with this one but that's the little mountain that i might i could make it a bit smaller i'm actually thinking i might 3d print something um, with like a, yeah, something I don't know yet, but I might 3D print something and design it up, do a video on that. That'll be pretty good. The front one's fine where it is. So you got you got this situation. This is why you can't mount it at the front. You'd need a you'd need a huge lackey band to go from there around and back again because of this this business they got. And you can't really put it up here because that turns, and it's not quite big enough, and everything's blocking it. So. We'll leave it as is that's the cable cable for the uh usb which is in there and that's it the boys come out and say hello um but yeah other than that all went really well legs feel fine bum feels fine so all good anyway cheers for watching and we'll catch you on the next one we'll do a, actually we'll do a weather update before i sign off i've got to go inside anyway i might bring my keys with me I'm sure the missus has got the back door locked. But yeah, crack a day. Really nice. And we've got... Oh, 24. Perfect. 24. I didn't realise I actually had a thermometer in here too. Uh, it looks like it's wrong. 20. Yeah, so don't trust that. Cool. Catch us later.